You see, the only good flesh is dead flesh. That which comes from the flesh goes the way of the flesh. Our self-will will be withered. And, and you don't want to misread the withering. When I'm talking about the withering anointing of the Holy Spirit, he is right now doing what I'm saying. But it isn't judgment. There's nothing wrong. In fact, it's an answer to our prayers. We say, Lord, purify me. He says, okay. And he blows in his withering work. You know, Lord, breathe upon this relationship and anything of it that's of you, let it be revealed. Guess what? He'll do his withering work, blow on it, and all of a sudden what's green turns dead, and you go, hey! <laughs> Wait a minute. See, there was more flesh in that than you thought. There was more flesh in that desire you had for yourself, for that talent or ability that God gave you. And so he always breaks up the ground before he plants the seed. Look through the Bible. It's his order. From Genesis on, first there was chaos, and the cosmos was brought out of the chaos. First Adam and Eve sinned, Genesis 3.16, God declared the judgment upon them. Then he brought them the salvation. First, they tried to take fig leaves and clothe themselves. And when that didn't work and was a failure, he then slew the animal and gave them the proper skins for their covering. First with Noah, God declared the judgment. And then he brought the ark and the salvation. That's the withering work of the Holy Spirit. He goes before our lives, our destinies, and our talents. He breathes upon all of those things, and whatever is wood, hand, stubble is going to be burned up. Now, this is good news because we don't want mixture in our lives. We don't want mixture in our relationships anymore. That means partly good, partly bad. Well, that's 60% God, 20% me, and what, the devil? How much a part of the... We don't want mixture. We want gold that's purified. And God is coming now with his fire, and it's the withering work of the Holy Spirit. And he's not trying to destroy you, and he's not being negative. He's so negative. He's not being negative. This is all a plus. He's bringing a total understanding of what is fleshly and what is of his spirit. And, you know, whatever it is, let's hold it up to God and say, Lord, let, let, let whatever can survive the fire, survive the fire. But if you burn it, if, if I hand you a relationship that's 60% God and 40% the devil, consume the wood hand stubble and give me what's left. Or maybe the whole thing gets consumed. But we need to submit ourselves to God. You know, it's interesting. Divine comfort and glory cannot come until first the Lord does his withering work. He's doing this in the body of Christ right now. I don't know if you've noticed it, but he is, he is, he is allowing us to see what we are. You know, the withering work of the Holy Spirit is in, occurs in two categories. First, with regard to our salvation. Secondly, with regard to our ministries. Before you can be saved, you have to know you're a sinner. You know, sometimes we cry out to God and we go, Lord, help me. And he goes, okay. And he shows you how vile you are. <laughs> he turns your righteousness into filthy rags. He puts you in a circumstance where you'll do unspeakable things you never dreamt that you could conceivably do. And, and, and he's actually answering your prayer for salvation, which is first he's got to show you that you really, really are a sinner. See, if you preach Christ to someone that thinks they're okay it, and there's no hole for the salvation to, there's no vacuum for the salvation to enter, the water will just fall and run off. It'll just run off. It's useless. Have you ever tried to share Christ with someone who thinks they're sufficient in their own pride, who thinks they're full in their own flesh, who thinks they don't need God? The message is wasted. God will cause a vacuum to occur so that that emptiness will be open to receive fullness. So the first time the withering work of the Holy Spirit happens is when you try to reach out to God and you try to pray and you try to surrender to him, you will find that first you have to realize how lost you are. John Newton once said, all I know is two things. He's a great savior and I'm a great sinner. You know, that's, that's the truth. Now, you can say you're a sinner, but not really because you're comparing yourself to others that have done worse things than you. No, you have to come to a point where the withering work of the Holy Spirit so breathes upon you that all flesh in you, all that you really are is seen and brought full center. And you know what? People that get saved too easily, too easily, they, they can stay babies forever. You know why? Because they really didn't realize how undone they were. Oh, they got their fire insurance. They accepted Jesus. But they really didn't see what vile little dogs they are. You wicked beast. If you think you're okay, wait till circumstances begin in the withering work of the Holy Spirit. You will find you. When you pass judgment on others, watch out. God will put you in the same circumstance and you'll hair lip anything they did. 
You see, <laughs> before you can be saved, the spirit, it's not the devil, it's God breathing upon you and showing you all the flesh that's still there, the self-will that's still there, the self-righteousness that you trust in. Well, I'm not as bad as them, and thank God we are not as they, and God will reduce you to spiritual penury where you will say with Isaiah, I am undone. When you're undone and that flesh is consumed, salvation comes. See, he wounds before he heals. He strips before he clothes you. He, he empties you before he fills you. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. And it isn't a punishment. It's a glorious work to embrace. We need to embrace the withering work of the Holy Spirit. Say, come on, fire. Come on. I've lasted this long. I really want to do it right. Consume all the wood hand stubble. Reveal all the flesh in me. Now, why do things wither? Because they're witherable. Why does the grass fade? Why do the flowers drop off? Because it is in their nature to fade. It's in their nature to wither. There are some things in us of the flesh, of our own willfulness, that are born to die. And God just speeds the work up by bringing a little fire in. See, he's about to move in such a profound way that we can't have any mixture in our friendships, our relationships, can't have any mixture in our understanding of our destiny, can't have any flesh that's dominating our dreams, our desires, our wants. And it doesn't mean you can't have anything good. It means that the withering work of the Spirit is here now to make sure that we truly see who we are. When we see that we're sinners, fully and completely, salvation is given. But the withering work of the Spirit is also happening in our ministries. That, that means what you're called to do and how you're called to do it. I've been in ministry for 34 years now, and I didn't understand it, but only recently the Lord has been using this metaphor with me saying, Craig, I've been working my withering work in you for years. Sometimes, see, if you misread the withering work of the Holy Spirit, you're going to think someone's under judgment. You're going to think so, there's something wrong with somebody. You're going to think they're having a nervous breakdown. You're going to think that there's something desperate about the situation. No, when the Holy Spirit comes into your ministry and he blows on it in order to destroy any vestige of your flesh, that looks like an awful lot of things. <laughs> You don't look well, baby. <laughs> and you're sick at heart, and nothing you do, the way you do it succeeds, and nothing seems to be fruitful. The Lord is just blowing upon all that is flesh and saying, you know what? Not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit. Let me just go in, and let me do my withering work, and I'll pull down and tear out in order that you can plant and build. Charles Spurgeon said, God never builds a new thing on an old foundation. He tears the old out to bring the new. And it is the withering work of the spirit that is doing this. Now, flesh, um, you know, the devil, I, I've often said the devil is a snake in Genesis and he's a dragon in Revelation. Someone's feeding him. <laughs> and, he, and he feeds on our flesh. He feeds on our self-will. He feeds on us making ourselves his instruments in the world. You know, when you're selfish and self-focused, the devil puts you on like a glove. Well, I'm not possessed. It's worse than that. You're, you're, you're a garment he can put on at will to go and sow division in somebody's marriage, to go out there and put bitterness in somebody's heart, to go and wound their self-esteem with your words. Loved one, you don't need to be spitting up green pea soup and your head falling around or in circles to be the tool of the devil in somebody's life. He can, ladies, he can lead you right into somebody's marriage and break that marriage up. Gentlemen, he can bring you right in and destroy that family right there. Well, I didn't mean to. Yeah, you didn't mean to. Well, it wasn't my intent. Yeah, it doesn't matter what your intent is. I use the example, if I back over my daughter's left leg, I didn't mean to. I'd never hurt her. Oh, it's never been in my heart to ever hurt my baby. I'd never hurt my baby. Well, get out of the car and do something about it. Whether you meant to or not, the leg's broken. Tend to it. 